Good afternoon. The committee will come to order. This is the uh, Subcommittee on Asia and Pacific of the Foreign Affairs Committee. I am Steve Shabbat, the Chairman. I want to thank the gentleman from California, uh, Mr. Barra, for serving as today's ranking member. And I also want to thank our distinguished witnesses, Assistant Secretary Daniel Russell and Acting Assistant Administrator Denise Rollins, for being here this afternoon. Uh, this hearing was called to assess the fiscal year 2015 State Department and U.S. Agency for International Development budget request for the East Asia and Pacific region. This region is receiving the single largest proposed spending increase at 9.4 percent compared to any other regional or functional bureau. Consequently, it is critical that we examine the Administration's priorities in the Asia Pacific and hear how this foreign aid budget will achieve the Administration's key regional goals. Of particular interest are those nations receiving a significant increase in foreign assistance, notably Burma, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and those countries where human rights abuses are thriving and political turmoil is surging, Cambodia, Thailand, and again Burma, to name a few. The United States has always recognized the Asia-Pacific region's political, economic, and security significance. Our long-term presence there is built on promoting stability, fostering respect for international law, advancing respect for human rights, and maintaining freedom of navigation and unhindered lawful commerce in the maritime regions. These objectives are fundamentally hinged on the United States' alliances with Japan, South Korea, Australia, Thailand, and the Philippines our resilient relationships with Taiwan and Singapore, and our evolving relationships with Vietnam and Indonesia. At the advent of the Administration's foreign policy rebalance toward the Asia-Pacific region was the recognition that this part of the world is the future centerpiece of global commerce and security strategy. Many here in Congress supported this effort, and our allies and partners in the region championed it. However, as we have seen over the past year in particular, America's presence in the region is being challenged, and growing tensions are threatening to undermine the Administration's ability to achieve its strategic goals. Other than the more enduring challenges in Asia, such as nuclear proliferation, human trafficking, terrorism, widespread corruption, extreme poverty, and natural disasters, we are now faced with progressively more complex security threats rattling the region's stability. North Korea's crimes against humanity and nuclear ambitions continue unabated. A political crisis has pushed our ally Thailand to the brink of disaster. Reports indicate Burma shows signs of genocide against the Rohingya Muslim population, and a promulgation of clashes between China and its neighbors over sovereignty claims in the East and South China Seas have turned the maritime thoroughfares into dangerous hot zones of conflict. Mr. Russell, the last time we saw you, we were discussing this last issue, uh, and I can tell you from conversations since then that many folks in the region welcomed uh, the more steadfast assur assurance that America will stay engaged. However, I do not think these maritime disputes will go away, nor do I feel China will stop challenging America's role there. So maintaining a high level of engagement and directing American resources toward the region to manage these tensions will not get any easier, in my opinion, especially with other crises around the world rearing their ugly heads. The foreign assistance budget we discussed today needs to support a coherent and cohesive strategic plan for the region. At the same time, our strategy itself needs to be judicious and discerning. We should not be funding projects just because we can. In fiscal year 2015, the Administration is seeking an additional $69.6 million for the Asia-Pacific region. The total requested budget of $810.7 million will be directed toward pursuing five objectives, which I hope you will elaborate on this afternoon. More specifically, the Administration is proposing providing Burma with an additional $26.6 million. The total, $88.5 million, is a 90 percent increase in aid compared to fiscal year 2012, assistant levels for Burma, that is. This committee has long taken an active interest in Burma, and as I have noted previously, we welcome the tremendous progress seen in that country over the past three years. U.S. involvement has been key. But today, that progress has plateaued and is deteriorating in some areas. I am concerned about the $250,000 in IMET assistance the Administration plans to utilize to engage with Burmese military. This military has not yet severed its ties with North Korea, has not halted its fighting in the ethnic areas, 
is complicit in abuses against the Rohingya and other ethnic minorities and is preventing needed constitutional reforms. And despite these concerns, the administration has still not detailed its strategy for future engagement with the Burmese military, which is unacceptable. Allowing Aung San Suu Kyi to run in the 2015 election used to be a key benchmark. But now the fact that Burma can't manage chairs, chairing ASEAN and continuing making reforms is enough for the administration to let this benchmark slide and be pushed down the road a few more years. Overall, I am disappointed by the administration's engagement approach with Burma, and I hope that our witnesses will touch on those areas of concern today. I am also troubled by the political impasse in Cambodia and the fact we are seeing very little return for the amount of aid provided there. The administration has been largely silent since last summer's election in Cambodia and should be more vocal about pushing for an independent, internationally assisted investigation into the conduct of those elections. I also continue to be concerned about Hun Sen's brutal crackdown on protests and rampant land grabbing. In fact, over 2,000 families have been affected by, quote, a renewed wave of violent land grabbing, unquote, since the beginning of this year. It is evident that our democracy programming in that country has not made sufficient progress, so I would like to know how those programs are being reassessed. I also hope today's witnesses will touch on how the administration plans to deepen relations between our allies in East Asia and the signing of a new 10-year defense cooperation agreement with the Philippines. While I have other areas of concern, I will touch on those issues in my questions so we have time to recognize other members. I look forward to hearing from our distinguished witnesses this afternoon, and I now yield to uh, Mr. Barra, uh, the acting uh, ranking member of the committee, for his opening remarks. Thank you, Chairman Shabbat, um, and thank you for calling this hearing. Obviously, this, this is timely on the heels of the President's recent trip to Asia.